Hey, Gary Hoover here. In my class and book about entrepreneurial thinking, both called The Art of Enterprise, uh, I talk about dozens of different methods for thinking creatively and coming up with innovations. And so let me show you one of them today. I call it grid thinking. Uh, it's really about a spreadsheet, but if you don't like spreadsheets, don't freak out. This is conceptual and about words and not about numbers, although I urge you to get good at spreadsheets and learn your numbers. And so take a, a grid, however big you want to make it, as many rows and columns, and across that grid, I'll tell you, I'll take an example out of my own past. I was sitting there, I was looking at it, and I was saying, what are the different kind of merchandise uh, uh, that people buy? And I can say, oh, they buy books, they buy information, they buy videos, they buy um, flowers, and you can make the list as long as you want. At the time I was doing this, I was trying to come up with some ideas for retail stores and new ideas. And, and then how can you get those things? Well, you can get them in a traditional bricks and mortar store, bricks and mortar as they call it. You could get them from a mail order company. You could buy them online. You could uh, borrow them from a library. You could have some sort of subscription model. So these are really, the way I've done it here, these are ways of distributing things, and these are things. And obviously, you could go on and on, especially down this way. Well, when I got into the business, um, my first company was a bookstore, and I'm going to draw a second category here. I'm going to say within bookstores, there were old-fashioned mall stores, and then I'm going to call them superstores. Well, when I got in the business, you had B. Dalton and Walden books, mall stores. You had um, some mail order catalogs, uh, uh, publishers, central bureau and stuff. You had libraries where you could borrow books. And in a sense, Book of the Month Club was a subscription system. Well, the idea of the superstore had just recently come to the fore when I was doing my research in the 1970s, the rise of Toys R Us. And superstore means a big store in a single category of merchandise, like books or toys, not a general merchandise store like Macy's or Walmart or Sears, but just a specialty category. And in that category, big selection and low prices. That's the short version of the idea. Well, all I did was took the bookstore idea and the demand for books and went here. Later, a company called Amazon filled that box in. And then we'd have to figure out exactly what column you put it under, but in a sense, Kindle, the iPad, and the Nook uh, are yet another way, uh, I guess, e-delivery, okay? And that's more recently come into being. But the boxes aren't all full because there's more columns out here. We'd have to think about what they might be. Home delivery, you know? Uh, um, uh, inform um, uh, take videos. Videos you could buy in a mall store, or back then you could rent at a rental place. Well, then Blockbuster came up and became the giant in that. But then Netflix came up with this kind of a subscription, a li well, um, uh, uh, really a, um, a library model. Sorry, I got it in the wrong box. So really a library model for Netflix, and of course now they're becoming streamable and downloadable. If I'd add a line for software, man, it went all the way through little software stars in the mall, and then big stores like CompUSA and everything, and then online, and now downloadable. I guess, I guess that goes over here with e-delivery, right? Uh, flowers, you could go to a florist shop, but then we got 1-800-Flowers, which is mail or telephone order, and of course they migrated to online. A way of uh, uh, trying some other columns, business information, information about big companies. You could get it two ways. You could get it in big fat books <laughs> like Moody's Manual and Standard Poor's or a subscription service like Value Line. Well, Hoover's came out with an affordable book. A company, it was called the Reference Press when I started, but later renamed Hoover's because uh, our first book was called Hoover's Handbook. And, and Hoover's came out with an affordable guide to companies, but then my friend Patrick Spain morphed it onto an online business, and within that, it became an online subscription business. The point here is that if you can begin to create some of these grids in your mind, and whatever your subject you're thinking about, just two dimensions and begin to look at what are the empty boxes and take a second and think about it. One thing I've thought about doing is sitting down with 10 really smart entrepreneurs 
and having them write on one side, because you can put whatever you want. You have the freedom to do whatever you want with these. And, and you could say on one side is all 10 of you tell me what your business is about. Well, we have the best um, e-learning platform in the world at my software company. And, you know, say that's an entrepreneur. Next person says, oh, I have the best uh, a dog washing service in the world, you know, or whatever. And, oh, I got this and I got that. And you could put the same ones up here the e-learning, the dog washing, and then think about what are the great ideas from each of these. What's the essence of it? Maybe the essence of your dog washing service is you go to people's houses and they don't have to mess up their house. They don't have to come to you. You pull in their, in their driveway. You've got a van. There's a franchise business that does this. And then it doesn't mess up their house. You actually charge more than you would if you went in the house or, or they came off site. But, you, you know, their dog's right there in their front yard and then you give it back to them clean and dry and all that. But the essence is this delivery kind of approach, a service. And, and you say, well, why is your e-learning platform better than anybody else's? Oh, because it has a much more robust way for students to talk to each other. It's like Facebook meets the universities. Okay, so student conversations. Well, how might that conversation apply to the dog washing business? How might this delivery system apply to e-learning? But you can see how it compounds. If I had 10 people, 10 sites, I'd got 100 boxes. And take a second and think about each one. Because most breakthrough ideas are just two things. Two things that people see every day. All of us see them, but nobody has put them together in a new way before. Nobody has seen them in a new light. So that's just one of many ways to really trigger entrepreneurial thinking and to come up with innovative solutions to society's challenges. So uh, Gary Hoover, good to see you again, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.